Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all having a great day and that you're all doing well to start things off. Recently, California-based blockchain security company BitGo announced their support for two major players in the cryptocurrency market and they are Dash and Stellar Lumens. The founder and CEO of BitGo, Mike Belshi, stated that both the platforms offer advancement in payments. He added that Dash has been focusing on offering instant payments, and one of their unique features is the privacy function can be accessed through their platform. He spoke about Stellar Lumens and how the platform had been contributing towards tokenization, he said. They have been focusing on the global payments for consumers, which is a little bit different than what Bitcoin does, end quote. BitGo, with the help of its custody product, supports 85 cryptocurrencies in the market, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Zcash. According to Fortune, BitGo announced that it was supporting Lumens in a couple of weeks. The company had recently introduced BitGo Trust, which is a qualified custodian for digital assets approved by the financial regulators of South Dakota. Mike stated that BitGo does not use its platform for trading, but provides custodianship and securities, he added. In our view, custodianship has been the missing piece in the infrastructure of digital currency, end quote. He also spoke about the differences in the custody solutions offered by BitGo and other platforms. He said that exchanges are usually focused on retail investors, where they focus on signing up 100,000 users a day. And the problem with that is that they have a very small team working behind the security. BitGo, on the other hand, has a fully dedicated research and development team whose sole purpose is to provide security in any company in the world. Uh, so I think it's interesting that we went for a very long time in the cryptocurrency space. And this is kind of what leads me to a uh, think that we're ha having some type of a maybe a possible uh, potential shift in price in the next couple of I don't want to say days. I want to say weeks. Uh, we've seen a lot of interest in Dash. You might have noticed like Dash was almost never in the news for multiple months. And now they're in the news almost at least two or three times a week. And I think that's because they're trying to focus on another sector of the cryptocurrency space that other people just haven't been really focusing on. And I commend them for that. And also Stellar Lumens as well. I think people are uh, anticipating some type of movement in the market. And therefore, uh, I think people are trying to figure out other assets to add onto their platform in order to be able to diversify should, or rather when the market does decide to start going back up, uh, that'll provide them uh, the chance to be able to say to other people who are looking for new platforms, hey, we also offer this as well on our platform, come over to us. Uh, regardless, very good news. I love to hear that other cryptocurrencies are being added to other platforms simply because uh, I've said before, we have so many cryptocurrencies and it's a shame that so many websites only offer three of them or have things pegged to just three of them. Uh, we have other coins and therefore they should also be used and also be integrated and also be added to other platforms uh, so we can get the altcoin space also moving as well. Next up, this one's actually very, very cool. Secured Automated Lending Technology or SALT. A platform which offers blockchain-backed loans will now be accepting Litecoin as collateral part of their endeavor in the growing crypto lending ecosystem. The announcement made by the firm on their blog along with a set of new features, including the removal of the maximum cap on loan amounts and updated loan solutions to cater to the emergent market. With the addition, apart from Litecoin, patrons can now purchase cash loans on the platform if they are backed by Bitcoin and Ethereum. Salt has made a name for itself in the niche market for being the top liquidity provider for large-scale cryptocurrency investors, including entities, firms working in the crypto market, and miners. Though its primary target is to offer loan solutions to large firms, the organization has equally invested in individual cu customers. They made it a go-to solution provider for a wide spectrum of clients. While enticing features like a live portfolio valuation, flexible learned learn tomes, Loan terms, 24-7 support, and exclusive custody solution. It is arguably, quote-unquote, the largest blockchain-based lending platform. Salt now offers loans in U.S. dollars with an interest rate of 5.99 for loans. Blah, blah, blah. Here are the numbers. Uh, one, uh, a couple of days ago, or rather a day or two ago, something like that, uh, I noticed that Litecoin had actually pumped up a tiny bit, as did Salt. And I was wondering why, and this seems to be the reason they announced that they were going to be doing this, and I guess uh, the idea that you'd be able to use Litecoin on top of the SALT platform as collateral for a loan is very interesting. Uh, so for those who were here last October, November, 
Salt was like a major thing. It was constantly in the news. Everyone was talking about salt because uh, we had had the idea of other or rather of crypto lending platforms, but none of them had exactly existed yet. And then Salt launched. Everyone was super excited. The price of Salt, I think, shot to like $24 or something like that. Uh, and this was during the the major crypto bull run of 2017. Everyone completely lost their minds. And then as the prices of cryptocurrency started going down, uh, the Salt team seemingly disappeared. We had news that their CEO had left and everyone thought it was very like, oh my gosh, this is completely over. And then last like four weeks, Salt has been in the news at least once or twice a week uh they've apparently the entire time that they were quiet they've been making sure that they are legal in other countries and that they have the proper uh paperwork in order to be working in those countries and that they are legal and apparently they are on multiple continents now as well so uh i think salt could have a very bright future i told you guys many times before my ideas as far as uh loans and stuff like that loaning and uh, debt in general. They, these are major, major markets. So the idea that a uh, because one of Salt's major thing as well is especially uh, for the U.S. based part. I'm not sure if this was still the same, but this is what they said when they were more active a couple of months ago. That they don't require uh, what was it called? Uh, um, that uh, um, a credit score in the states. They don't require a credit score in order to be able to receive it because simply, I think you are. Uh, giving them crypto or money to hold in exchange for the loan that they end up giving you back. And this is how they bypass it. Or something. Like, like I said, I'm not sure if that still remains, but this is one of their like main key feature points. Uh, if I know we also have ETH Lend, E-T-H-L-E-N-D, uh, but at the moment, Salt is actually the one that's constantly in the news every single day. I uh, like the idea of it. And I hope that they continue to do stuff like this because this also then shows another use case for cryptocurrencies in general, especially if you can uh, lend them out to people who are looking for loans and have a dedicated platform to that. That is something that is going to, in my opinion, that could potentially take off as uh, a large number of people around the world typically take out loans and or debt for things that they are trying to buy. That's just at least how I feel about it. Next up, Bitcoin and its blockchain network continue to grow. Segregated Witness, or SegWit, one of the scalability solutions implemented by Bitcoin, has registered new records. In October, the number of transactions using SegWit accounted for 50% of the total number of payments. The SegWit protocol continues to offer a monumentous solution to Bitcoin scaling scalability issues. This time, the number of SegWit transactions jumped from 45% to 53% at the beginning of October. SegWit allows the Bitcoin network to process faster transactions, paying lower fees. After being implemented in 2017, it has steadily grown during the current year. At the beginning of 2018, SegWit adoption was just 14%. That means that since January... The number of SegWit transactions has grown 3.6 times. Only in October, it spiked from 45 to 53%. May and March were the most important months related to SegWit adoption. Due to the increased amount of transactions using SegWit, Bitcoin's block 540107 was the biggest block ever mined. This block had 2.26 megabytes. Since the technology allows the blockchain to have bigger blocks, Although SegWit seems a great solution to the scalability issues faced by Bitcoin, it is not definitive. Bitcoin developers are working in order to create a second layer solution to process millions of transactions per second. The off-chain scaling proposal is known as Lightning Network and is currently being tested. Uh, one, this is great. Uh, it allows Bitcoin to uh, not only be a bit quicker in what it does, but also uh, you may have noticed... Uh, depending on the crypto exchange that you are using or how you are exchanging your Bitcoin or how you're getting your Bitcoin, that uh, transaction fees have also been considerably lower. And I am uh, very grateful for this because we had a time, for those who were not here, where Bitcoin transactions were you cost anywhere between $5 and $30 per transaction. That's unacceptable. We even had a couple of months ago where people were talking about the, uh, what's it called, that they were transacting in Bitcoin. And I think the transaction fees for sending I think tens of thousands of dollars came out to 17 cents, and that was like a major thing as well. Uh, it's not in, 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 in the news so much anymore. I think everyone is focusing on uh, scalability as far as uh, not really caring about low transaction fees anymore. When it comes to Bitcoin, I think people have become uh, like we get it. We know Bitcoin has uh, higher transaction fees, and this is why we've seen a lot of other crypto projects who have come forward talking about that they have no fees. And this is why they're gaining in popularity. 
as it were. Uh, there was something that happened a couple of days ago where uh, I think it was Roger Ver and Charlie Lee. Uh, they were talking about the Lightning Network, and it was just a complete mess, the entire conversation that they were having. Uh, as of now, Lightning Network is active, but it is um, going to have to go through the exact same thing that SegWit went through in that you will have to... Uh, increase the amount of people who are actually using the lightning network people thought it would take a bit longer time for uh, segwit transactions to uh, actually jump up to this number so it's not too bad it's actually pretty great i'm going to assume by the end of 2019 hopefully we at least have 80 percent of uh, transactions flowing through segwit and then we're also going to have to wait for the number of transactions through lightning network to also increase as well there's a lot of other people who are uh using lightning network it's been in the news i haven't covered it because it's like people accepting it for like coffee in their and their coffee shop and stuff like that and like in in monaco and like one place accepts it uh but the fact that anyone is accepting it at all and is slowly starting to actually uh gain acceptance is very good for the eventual uh future of bitcoin anyway the point is is that uh this is continuing to happen and it's very good that people are actually jumping on the ship as well because if bitcoin had continue to stay where it was last year uh we would have a lot more negative news about it uh but it seems like people are joining together to make sure that uh the scalability and the future of bitcoin at least as a method of payment is uh moving forward bitcoin once again in the news by the end of the year an initial coin offering or an ico will be launched on bitcoin while Ethereum, the second largest blockchain by market cap and other smart contract protocols, have been the choice of the majority of entrepreneurs interested in creating new crypto tokens. With a side chain created by RSK, Bitcoin will now have the ability to host the new fundraising mechanism as well. In fact, the original concept of an ICO was first started on the Bitcoin blockchain itself back in 2013. Though with the comparatively limited blockchain infrastructure to that of Ethereum today, by self-proclaimed investor inventor of the idea, J.R. Willett, who raised a total of half a million dollars for the token, Mastercoin, later renamed to Omni. I remember Mastercoin. That's insane. I was wondering what happened to it. And sometime in late November, Temco, a South Korea-based blockchain startup targeting supply chain management, will take advantage of both the Semino idea and RSK's technology, launching a public token sale with the goal of raising $19 million. Stepping back, RSK has been working on a Turing Complete Smart Contract block sidechain for Bitcoin since early 2016. The smart contracts are written in the same dominant language as Ethereum that began Solidity. Okay, that being Solidity. Okay, and the network is fueled by Bitcoin pegged cryptocurrency dubbed Smart Bitcoin or SBTC, because why not? Still in beta, only a handful of crypto projects are deploying smart contracts on the RSK sidechain currently. However, given time, Temco CEO Scott Yoon and head of business development Joey Chow said they believe Bitcoin will soon attract a greater number of blockchain projects and one day have the same function like Ethereum. Yoon is adamant that Bitcoin possesses the potential to become much more than just payment cryptocurrency, seeing the upcoming launch of Temco's ICO as indicative of this. There was news a couple of months ago as well, not even the, uh, what is it called, RSK thing that's happening. Uh, someone else was also trying to build smart contracts on top of bitcoin which we don't really hear that much of anymore for those bitcoin is uh function wise not as uh functionable as other blockchains that we have right now like bitcoin works but it doesn't work as well as other blockchains i'll say it this way so a lot of people are trying to implement the same exact things that they're putting onto other blockchains on top of bitcoin and it doesn't work as well so they have to use side chains and then the argument is if you're using a side chain it's not actually bitcoin because there's not the big the main bitcoin uh, blah 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 that everything is running through but then you have the same exact argument that this is also happening on other blockchains that like the things with ethereum like they're also building side chains in order to be able to run the icos on their platform now that that's been covered uh the idea is uh and i've spoken about this many times and a lot of people uh, don't care for my use of words. I'll say it that way. Uh, Bitcoin is uh, staggering in that it is having a problem keeping up with other cryptocurrencies as right now. The the initial the initial the initial idea of Bitcoin was to be used as a payment method around the world, and now that that has uh, shifted over to a store of value, there are a lot of people, especially Bitcoin maximalists, who are not 
uh, in tune with the idea of being digital gold. They think that Bitcoin can do a lot more. And the solution is by using side chains in order to kind of branch off of Bitcoin to be able to use the Bitcoin network, but also still be their own dependent thing that can then have other things be built on top of Bitcoin. I think this is going to take some time because of the uh, Bitcoin isn't really built 100% to handle the capacity of other things like EOS or even Tron or Ethereum. Uh, this is going to happen eventually. Like don't 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 assume that this is not going to uh, come to fruition, as it were. I think Bitcoin eventually will be a place where you can have ICOs and where you can have uh, airdrops and token swaps and uh, smart contracts and stuff like that. I don't think it'll ever be as major. I I can't even say that. Uh, we could get to a point where no. It would take at least like five or six years to properly build these things up, making sure that they work properly. But I think at that time, other platforms will definitely become larger. But I think we will eventually see a a a future where people are just wanting to build on top of Bitcoin because it's able to build on top of Bitcoin because of the side chains that are there, which will be pretty good because this also then offers another area of... Uh, I told you guys before, the thing that makes other blockchain platforms uh, important or more expensive or worth more in value is when other things are being built on top of them because it then also uh, creates a a thing where you have to protect that chain because it is so valuable because the things are built on top of it. Should that chain then die, everything else that's attached to it as well, as especially the side chains, then also uh, face risk as well. Uh, so this, in turn, could then lead us to a future where Bitcoin is not only valuable because it is being used as a payment method or a store of value for those, even if you don't care to spend your Bitcoin, but also because uh, we have then websites and ICOs and dApps and all these other things and smart contracts built on top of Bitcoin as well. Same as many other uh, chains that we have out there, but this is uh, actively going on. Like I said, a lot of people are not content uh, with the idea of just having bitcoin sitting on their uh laptop or on an exchange because it is a store of value they want to actually be able to use the platform and this is only i think going to accelerate especially when someone has successfully been able to do this other people are going to try and jump aboard as well and this is only good i guess then for the actual future of bitcoin itself So uh, there's something happening, and it's, it's really interesting. You can even see this right here uh, without reading too much into it. Uh, the last couple of days, I've seen a number of other cryptocurrency channels, not going to name any names, have been hyping up the idea that last weekend, that is a couple of hours ago, Saturday and Sunday, that we were going to see, especially even Friday, that Bitcoin was going to shoot to the moon, and therefore um, everything would be a lot better. Uh, you may have also noticed those uh, videos popping up from other cryptocurrency YouTubers as well. Uh, the idea is that, uh, and I'll show you right here on the graph, a lot of people who have been doing the technical analysis or who have been researching the charts and seeing exactly, because apparently what happened in 2017 uh, is also taking place right now. And pretty much it comes down to when the... So the, the market has certain indicators as to exactly what's going to happen. And if you look around right here, this is actually 2017, even though, yeah, it says it up here, this is 2017. Uh, you can look right around here. When we hit this point, we've been going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And we've gotten to a very uh, stable point. Remember, I had the article a couple of days ago where people were talking about that Bitcoin has become very boring. And that's because the prices are... Uh, They've mainly, like, since even April, they've pretty much stayed in this range. And Bitcoin is known, I don't have the rest of the chart around here. Bitcoin is known as this, like, wildly volatile, crazy thing. And this is why we've had so many people from uh, Wall Street and stuff like that getting into Bitcoin simply because they say that they, they like the idea of volatility. Because if you don't know, when you trade back and forth, let's say, even though these aren't, uh, this, these are months, let's say on any given day, if you zoom into a, a chart and these are the actual daily movements. Uh, if you sell here and then buy here and then sell here and then buy here over and over, uh, which isn't difficult if you have studied uh, even for like a day or two how to trade charts, uh, you make an enormous amount of profits. But as Bitcoin has been continuously trending sideways, the idea is, is that we're reaching a consolidation point. This is what they say. Uh, that is going to come to a head eventually, pretty much meaning that we can only go sideways for so long. At a certain point, the market is going to either... Uh, shoot down and slam back down because there's no uh the, the the required volume isn't there or the amount of interest simply isn't there the buying interest simply isn't there 
or we will get to, so so tight a range that people will decide that this is the bottom of the price. Remember, we had news also the last couple of weeks. Everyone keeps saying the price of Bitcoin has bottomed. It cannot go any lower. It will not go any lower. And this makes a lot of sense. If you look at where we are right now, 65, give or take. And even in a uh, April 6th, we were at 68, 66. And even somewhere around here, when we were pushing down, we were near, uh, one, one of these days we hit, yeah, 72. I think even a couple of exchanges were noting that we hit like 69 something. So this is why it's believed that this number right here is the bottom of the price. And therefore, you, this is why you've seen a lot of the other videos talking about when moon, or we're gonna hit the moon, or the moon is slowly coming, because typically in the past, when we've seen things like this on the price of Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency space, uh, something switches, something clicks, and normally, historically, Bitcoin then ends up shooting up. No one knows uh, when this amazing phantasmagorical event is supposed to happen. I told you guys, I've lost, uh, not, not lost hope, I've pushed my hope way down the well, and I'm just going to assume that 2018 is going to be a a uh, year where things where infrastructure is being built up. But there are a lot of people who believed that a couple days ago the prices were going to shoot up. And also they think that sometime even this week we could definitely see something as well. I will never tell you that something is going to happen definitely on a certain day. Uh, simply because no one knows. Crypto is too, uh, what, what, what's the word? Unpredictable in that, you know, we could uh, see the beginning signs of a breakout in price. And then we could have four more countries talking about that they're going to ban it or that some other country is banning debit payments with Bitcoin or crypto and you can't do this anymore. And then the price ends up going down. The crypto is too uh, unpredictable to say when things are going to happen. At some point, yes, Bitcoin will go back up. No one knows exactly when this is going to happen. Uh, but analysts believe that we are on the cusp like very, very soon that this is supposed to happen, which would be pretty great. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. I wouldn't mind a... Uh, in October, November, December, potentially early January bull run. I think that'd be pretty nice for everybody's pockets. Anyway, let's move on. Zero X has also been in the news. I'll read a bit through it. Uh, despite the extremely stable market conditions, like I just said, which has med, med, which has led many to jokingly dub Bitcoin the most decentralized stablecoin, there was one crypto asset that stood out like a sore thumb, posting substantial gains that made speculators rush into a frenzy. This crypto asset, like you are likely aware of, is 0x, the native digital asset of the 0x ecosystem, which is somehow up 16% in the past 24 hours. Here's a little chart right here. Uh, so they talk about uh, where the price was, where the price they think is going to be going, people, why people were wondering why the price had actually shot up. No one was aware of what was going on. Uh, so someone said, although some claimed that this was visual trickery, uh, Alex Kruger, along with other prominent crypto commentators, uh, corroborated the image with the Argentinian New York-based crypto analyst taking to Twitter to write that this is legit. So what ended up happening was is that people saw the 0x ticker on Coinbase, and it was also a part of Coinbase's tax gain loss calculator that they have on their website that they put on last year when they were confronted by regulators saying that you give no indication of how to pay taxes to your people who are using your platform and therefore this is when they added this so it's not as important uh, to the entire thing but the point is is that 0x was added to this entire thing people were taking screenshots of it and they were showing that the 0x wallet was also on the cost basis for taxes beta uh, but the answer is why or question rather why would 0x be added to Coinbase if they had, especially to their taxes thing, which means that they have been incorporated into the system, if Coinbase had not been planning on using it? But to be 100% fair, I'm going to play uh, Crypto's Advocate in that we have seen this before with other coins. We've seen XRP listed on uh, not even their taxes area. We saw it listed for trade before and also other people. Uh, we've seen this kind of... Uh, witchcraft if you were before in the cryptocurrency space not to say that this is not taking place zero x is actually even is it going to click over e yeah we go uh it's actually even up a little tiny bit more than it was before uh simply because of this and this is people uh people are saying that once again the what's it called the 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 coin base effect is definitely in effect once again uh because in the past we've seen 
Uh, normally, when Coinbase is announcing a new asset is going to be added to their uh, website, the price ends up going crazy. People were saying that this had uh, not happened for Ethereum Classic, and I have my own ideas as to why it didn't happen for Ethereum Classic. Uh, but even before, when we saw them talking about adding the five other assets, it was 0x, BAT, Cardano, Stellar, and I can't remember the last one at all. Uh, the price of them also shot up by anywhere from like 15 to 22 percent. They've all slid back down uh, since then. But Coinbase hype is definitely a very real thing. I have a strong. The, we we've also seen. I remember I told you guys. I said uh, it's really interesting that we went uh, many moons without ever hearing about zero X. All of a sudden, Coinbase starts talking about zero X, and then every other platform is also announcing that they're also going to add zero X because they're trying to make sure that they get a little slice of the hype uh, whenever. It does get added. I, I'm, I don't work for Coinbase, so I cannot say that it is going to be added. But I think at this point, from the backing behind Zero X and also it coming out of left field, I feel like it's definitely going to be one of the ones added. Uh, as of now, I think the five that they were talking about are all probably going to be added. I think Stellar is probably a definite. This is my own opi uh, own opinion. Uh, I don't know about Cardano. I haven't heard too much about it i know they're doing something in the next couple of coming months and that could give them a listing but i think it's going to be zero x i think it's going to be bad and i think it's going to be stellar those are just my personal opinions especially from like what i've been seeing and who've been adding certain coins onto their platform and stuff like that anyway uh that is going to do it for this video i hope you all enjoyed uh hopefully good days are ahead for crypto everyone seemingly thinks that within this week we could be seeing something once again don't hold your breath We've been through this many times before, especially earlier this year. You will remember uh, all the news that these people were saying that during this conference, the price was going to go up. The prices went down uh, during this day. The prices are going to go up because historically Bitcoin has gone up uh, during this time of May on the 14th of so and so at this time when the rooster crows on top of its nest that this is going to happen. And none of it ended up coming true. Uh, don't hold your breath. It's going to happen eventually. Uh, but don't let other people trick you or have you FOMO into the market, assuming that something is going to happen at a certain time. For all we know, there could be another bug and Bitcoin prices might go down. At some point, it's going to go up. It's just a matter of when. Thank you once again for watching and or listening. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening. Thank you very much again for all your support. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all soon. See you.